Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm bringing you a book haul. Now this is a book haul made up exclusively of books that I received on NetGalley. If you don't know what NetGalley is, it is basically a platform that publishers can use to send out um, e-advanced reader copies or e-proofs of their upcoming releases to drum up some buzz and get some early reviews. If you are someone that reviews books, even if it's just leaving reviews on Goodreads or Amazon, I would highly recommend you signing up to NetGalley. When I first created my YouTube channel, I signed up to NetGalley and I used it a lot um, but in sort of recent years where I haven't been reading digital books so much and I've been sent a lot more um, physical copies, physical advanced reader copies and proofs I just stopped using NetGalley but of course in the current climate where publishers aren't able to send out as many proofs as they were previously I think NetGalley is more important to the industry than ever before. So I signed up for a new account and requested some books and I am so excited for the books that I now have in my digital library. Today I'm going to be talking to you about 16 books so I'm going to be talking about the books that come out up to the end of June and I'm just going to talk about them in release date order because that seems like the fairest thing to do. I do have a few books that are already out so I'm going to talk about them first quickly. First up I have If I Never Met You by Mari McFarlane. I read one Mari McFarlane book um, I think last year and I really liked it. It wasn't a favourite book but it definitely made me want to read more of her writing and I've been really getting into like rom-coms um, in the past couple years. And I am so excited to read this book in particular because the premise is ticking so many boxes for me. So this book is about Laurie who is dumped by her partner of 18 years. She's totally blindsided by it and she feels really humiliated. On top of that she also still has to work with her ex. Then one day she finds herself trapped in a lift with her very handsome colleague Jamie and they hatch a plan to stage the perfect romance. I love fake dating. It is one of my absolute favourite tropes. Based on the previous book I read by Mary McFarlane, her books are like just really really funny. The characters are really well crafted so I'm really excited to read this one. Next up I have Hitting a Straight Lick with a Crooked Stick by Zora Neale Hurston. I read some of Zora Neale Hurston's short stories when I was at university and I absolutely loved her writing. In 1925 Zora Neale Hurston was the sole black student at Bernard College in New York and these are a collection of her stories that she wrote during this period. I'm not sure if there's any overlap between the short stories that I would have read at uni and this collection but regardless it would be great to read those stories again. I absolutely loved them. I found so much of value in them. I thought they were so well crafted. She writes a lot about sort of the African-American zeitgeist about class and gender and race, all topics that I'm really interested in. For a long time Zora Neale Hurston's writing was largely forgotten and it's great to see her writing coming to people's attention again. Next up I have a non-fiction book. I have Invisible Woman by Caroline Criado Perez. Loads of people on booktube have been reading this book recently and it really intrigues me. This is a book all about, it's about looking into things like government policy, um, medical studies, um, inventions, and looking at a lot of aspects of the world we live in are specifically built for men. They are specifically built with a bias towards men. So I think one of the examples that a lot of people give is that statistically women are more likely to die in car crashes, not because they're more likely to crash a car, but because seat belts are built with like a male body in mind. A lot of the sort of feminist nonfiction I read tends to be kind of subjective and anecdotal based so I really appreciate it when there's a book that really goes into like scientific studies and what the author is talking about it has scientific backing so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Next up I have Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. So the synopsis of this book sounds like there's a lot going on so we follow our protagonist who is a sous chef and this is like her dream job um she gets fired from this job when she confronts her boss after she sees him like harassing one of the waitresses. She vows to get revenge after she is fired and she turns to a guy named Brayden Mack who thinks he knows everything about romance because he reads so many romance novels with the Bromance Book Club. The Bromance Book Club decide that they're gonna help our protagonist get revenge on her boss but they're also trying to encourage a romance between these two characters. I'm really not sure if I'm gonna like this one or not, but I think it'll be a fun reading experience nonetheless. Next I have The Bass Rock or The Bass Rock? The Bass Rock? 
I'm not sure, by Evie Wilde. Um, this is a book that I've heard a lot of really positive reviews about. It's set in Scotland and it follows three women from different time periods that are linked. So we have Sarah in the early 1700s who is accused of being a witch. We have Ruth who is grappling with how her life has changed in the aftermath of the Second World War. And six decades later, we take a look at the life of Viv who is mourning the death of her father in this abandoned house and going through Ruth's belongings. That's all I really know about this one, but I've heard so many positive reviews that I'm really looking forward to it. And also I love the cover of this one. Next I have Wow Now Thank You by Samantha Irby. This is another non-fiction book. I read one of her other essay collections earlier this year, We Are Never Meeting in Real Life. And I didn't love it, but I was definitely intrigued to read some more of Samantha Irby's writing because I wanted to give it another go. She writes a lot about her experiences of being a woman of colour, of being a queer woman, the intersection of all those identities. So yeah, definitely intrigued to give her writing another go. I was also sent You People by Nikita Lawani. I reviewed this book in my April wrap-up, so I will leave that link down below if you want to check it out. This is a novel that is centred around an Italian restaurant in London where all of the people who work there or a lot of the people who work there are illegal immigrants. We look at this story through the lens of two characters as they go through their personal journeys but they're also discovering more about the man that runs this restaurant, Thule, who offers a huge amount of support to the immigrants that work in the restaurant both in terms of kind of practical support in how you navigate life as an illegal immigrant but he also gives people a huge amount of financial help and it's slightly confusing how he manages to get all of this money. I realised a lot about the day-to-day -day experiences of being an illegal immigrant in London through reading this book and if you want to hear more of my thoughts my wrap-up will be linked down below. Another book that I've already reviewed is The Switch by Beth O'Leary. Beth O'Leary is probably best known for her previous novel The Flat Share which I'm so excited to get my hands on a copy of after reading this book. The Switch follows two characters, a grandmother and granddaughter, Eileen and Lena. Lena is asked to take a break from her job because while she's amazing at her job, she is really suffering from burnout. So Lena decides to go and stay with her grandmother who lives in quite a quintessentially small English village. But then they decide instead they are going to swap lives. So Lena is gonna take over all of the sort of local responsibilities that her grandmother has and her grandmother is going to go down to London, experience life in London, stay with Lena's flatmate. It's such a fun book, I really loved it and if you do want to hear more of my thoughts, as I said my wrap up will be linked down below. Next I have We Just Clicked by Annabelle. I did have a physical proof of this book, it was like a wiro bound proof, um, but I ended up leaving that in London when I very quickly had to come over to Ireland. So I'm very pleased the publishers kindly gave me a e-arc of this one as well. This book is about two online influencers that decide they are going to fake date in order to boost both of their profiles. Again, I love fake dating. But I believe our protagonist Izzy then meets someone that she's actually interested in dating, so she then has to decide between a genuine romance and a fake romance that is bolstering her career. Love fake dating, love books about social media, really excited for this one. Next I have Come Again by Robert Webb. You may know Robert Webb as the guy behind Peep Show and a number of other comedy shows, or you may also know him from his memoir How Not To Be A Boy. I read his memoir like two or three years ago, whenever it came out, um, and I absolutely loved it. And this is Robert Webb's fiction debut, and it sounds like such an interesting premise for a novel. So Kate met her husband Lee 28 years ago, and they fell head over heels in love. Then dies suddenly, and Kate begins this spiral where she stops caring for her herself completely. She's pushed away her friends, she lost her job, everything seems to be falling apart. But one day she wakes up in the wrong room and the wrong body, and then realizes that she has gone back to 1992 when she was 18 years old. Back to the very first day where she met Luke. But of course, the Luke that she meets isn't the same as her husband. He's 19 years old. He's a totally different person at that time. And she remembers everything. She is still her grown up elder self but just in an 18 year old's body. What a fascinating dynamic that is. I am so excited to read this book. In fact, I think I'm gonna pick it up as soon as I finish filming this video. Next, I have Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. 
I read her previous book with the fire on high earlier this year and I really loved it and I'm really intrigued to read her previous novel The Poet X which I think is she's probably most well known for. I actually finished reading this one the other day and I thought it was so fantastic. This is a YA book that is told in verse from the perspective of two teenage girls and these girls are actually sisters but they don't know it yet. One of them lives in mainland America and one of them lives in Dominican Republic and they only find out they are sisters when their dad dies in a plane crash. He had been living this like double life where he was a father to both of them, but neither of them knew that the other one existed. I will talk about my full thoughts about this book in my May wrap up, um, but I, I was really touched by this book. The next few books are books that haven't come out yet, so I will put the dates somewhere on the screen so you can see when they come out. And of course, all of the books I've mentioned throughout the entirety of this video will be linked down below in the description if you would like to find out more about them. If you are interested in any of these books and you possibly can buy them from an independent bookstore, I would really encourage you to do that, but I know that's not possible for everyone. So this book I am so excited for. This is Wonderland by Juno Dawson. I've read a couple of Juno Dawson books in the past and really enjoyed Though. She's one of those writers who I know has a really expansive back catalogue that I haven't experienced yet and I'm really looking forward to being able to go back and read her backlist. So I'm obsessed with Alice in Wonderland. It's probably one of my favourite books of all time. I love it. It's possibly one of the books I've reread the most in my life. And this is an Alice's Adventures in Wonderland inspired story that of course follows Alice who lives a life of immense privilege. I do think there are some themes of mental health here and Alice may not be entirely in touch with what's real and what isn't. When her very troubled friend Bunny goes missing, she makes it her mission to find out what happens to her and find her. Along the way, she is invited to this party called Wonderland. She's hoping that she will be able to find Bunny there, but things get a lot more complicated at this party and she ends up being enemies with this girl named Paisley Hart. This just sounds so good. Maybe I should read this one after I finish this video. I'm just so excited for so many of these books. Next I have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and this sounds like such a fantastic novel that ticks so many of my boxes. So this book is about two twin sisters who are brought up together but run away when they're 16 and their lives diverge from there. Everything about their lives is different, their families, their communities and even their racial identities. One of the sisters ends up back in the same town that she tried to escape living with her daughter. The other sister secretly passes for white. Her white husband doesn't know anything about her past or her upbringing. But then the lives of these two sisters' daughters begin to intersect and I think I think it brings them back together in some way and starts to unravel some of the lies they've told along the way. This book tells the story of their families spanning from the 1950s up to the 1990s. I love books that span that amount of time that are about several generations of a family, books about sisterhood. I think this is going to be a really fantastic novel. Next I have This Happy by Neve Campbell. Now the description of this novel was kind of vague but there was enough in there that made me think it was a total Leanne book. So this book is about 23 year old Alan who falls in love with a much older married man. They go and stay in a cottage in rural Ireland that is overseen by a landlady. Six years later, Alana is married to a different man and sees this landlady from afar. And it brings up a lot of memories from the time that she stayed in that cottage. Set in Ireland, woman in her 20s, weird power dynamic relationship, slightly confusing landlady. Yes, please. Next is a book that I am beyond excited to have. This is Scenes of a Graphic Nature by Caroline O'Donoghue. I read Promising Young Women by Caroline O'Donoghue earlier this year and it's one of my favourite books ever. So I didn't even need to know what this book was about in order to request a copy. I just knew that I wanted to read this book. This book is about a young woman named Charlie who has been sort of floundering in the British film industry for a number of years. With her father's health rapidly declining, she decides to visit a very small island off the west coast of Ireland to learn more about his past, her heritage. But when she's there, she doesn't just build a stronger connection with her father's past. She actually becomes involved in a devastating conspiracy that has been 60 years in the making. That just sounds wild. <laughs> I'm also really intrigued by the setting of this book because Caroline has created like a fictitious island off the coast of Ireland. I think it'll be really interesting to see how she does that. And the final book I'm going to talk to you guys about today is Cowgirl by Kirsty Eyre. This book is like so strange because I feel like it ticks so many boxes for me but it's also kind of about something that 
I would never have any interest in normally. So this is about Billy, who is a young woman originally from Yorkshire but now living in London. Her life aspiration is to find a cure for the disease that killed her mother. But when her father falls ill, she has to return to Yorkshire in order to try and save their dairy farm. Returning to Yorkshire though also means leaving behind her blossoming romance and this is a queer story and I'm so pleased to see that, that representation because while I've been getting into a lot of rom-coms, so many are heterosexual. So on the one hand, it's a romantic comedy, it's an LGBTQ plus story, it is about a young woman returning to her family home to discover things about herself. So that makes it a very strong Leanne book. It's also about a dairy farm, which I'm not sure I've ever read anything about a dairy farm. So they are all of the books that I'm going to talk about today. Do leave me a comment down below and let me know if you are excited to read any of these books or if you've already read them. I will be doing another NetGalley haul where I talk about some books that are coming out slightly later in the year. I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe, and I will talk to you in my next video.